I'm Demir Novosel, president and founder of Quanta Technology. I've been really lucky to have a possibility to work with synchronized measurement technology uh, since 1990s. However, the real global deployment of the technology has started after the blackouts in Europe and the United States in 2003, and then later on after the big blackout in India in 2012. As technology has been deployed globally, the focus has been transmission. As we are now having changes in electrical power system, when things are happening much faster because of some of the dynamic changes due to inverter-based resources, we see now, in addition to transmission, major pro proliferation of the technology in distribution as well. Uh, synchronized measurements are really the global positioning satellite technology of the power grid. These days we cannot imagine driving a car without having navigation tools like GPS to tell us exactly where we are and where we are heading. And it's no different in than uh, applying the synchronized measurements in power systems because they enable us to see where we are in the power system and help us plan and operate the system going forward. So in conclusion, synchronous measurement technologies are really a basic technology. So if every phone can have a GPS signal, I really don't see any reason why we would not have every substation having GPS signals and also some other major locations in the electrical power grid to be able to have that visibility of the power grid and enable us to improve monitoring, protection, and control of the grid. Hi, I'm Eric Udrin, Executive Advisor at Quanta Technology. Our industry is deploying time-synchronized wide area grid measurement to improve transmission and distribution state visibility and awareness of fine-grained behavior that operators and engineers were unable to see before. Those of us creating these designs saw how the same data collection can serve holistic control and protection needs. A key example is our invention of falling conductor protection to cut the risk of wildfire ignition when live conductors contact the ground. We invented this while developing synchrophaser applications to handle the impact of photovoltaic penetration on distribution circuits. Reduction of fire risk is a top priority, so we focused on development of a system that detects and trips when a broken conductor has fallen only a few feet. This avoids an arcing ground fault that we could not otherwise detect. One utility has now equipped 16 circuits in high fire risk zones with upcoming plans for over 100 installations. Meanwhile, many utilities have been deploying transmission synchronized data gathering for control center state visualization. We use the same falling conductor invention with new algorithms to monitor transmission lines and trip long before a broken conductor reaches the ground. Because tree contact with unbroken lines can also cause arcing faults and fire ignition, we included yet another innovation. Ultra-sensitive ground fault detection with synchronized current data which trips for faults of up to 5,000 ohms. In turn, this fault protection experience points to the use of a wide area platform for a new backup fault protection system that can accurately remove faulted power system sections not cleared by failed primary relays or circuit breakers in less time than today's remote backup relays without the critical settings coordination and with any mix of inverter-based generation. Thanks. Hi, I'm Dan Brancaccio, Executive Advisor at Quanta Technology. One aspect of synchrophaser or any synchronized measurement infrastructure that may be overlooked is the data and network management. The end-to-end -end architecture from the field measurement devices through the applications and finally into an archive need to be designed and deployed as a complete coherent system. Here are some key points to implementing these systems. Typical data delivery architectures at utilities are designed for SCADA data where the measurements are polled. In the case of synchronized measurements, these data are published at a constant rate. Set up KPIs with your specific business units at the utility to ensure that this data is arrived and available with low latency and the availability statistics are required for the applications are met. 
Stick with industry accepted communication protocols that standards that are supported by a majority of the manufacturers. Also, uh, for North American installations, design your system architectures with NERC SIP compliance in mind. Finally, it is important to bring to the synchrophaser measurement architecture a strong naming convention for these measurement devices. Uh, this is specifically important for this type of data because of the relationships of these measurements to each other. Uh, use your existing SCADA, EMS, GIS uh, systems to help with the naming convention, but start the naming early and stick to a standard convention throughout the deployment of these measurement devices. I hope this has been helpful and informative. Thank you. As more and more utilities are recognizing the importance of the technology, many of them have taken actions to integrate the technology into their control operations. Our team members at Quanta have been involved in many large-scale deployment projects since 2005. We know very well the such a system is a much more involved undertaking than putting a pilot system with a few PMUs. Everything must work right in order to achieve the desired objective, such as a solid supporting infrastructure for reliable data transfer and exchange, advanced applications for turning the data into actionable information so operators only need to respond when there is a real issue. Effective information visualization, 24 by 7 product and system support, able to work slow any software or hardware failures, and the list can go on. The key for a successful deployment that can transition smoothly into control room operations is to follow the proven systematic approach from the planning to the system handover. Skipping any step or not doing it properly will risk putting a system into control room that may create more problems than help the operators. Dear colleagues, I'm Julio Romero Aguero. I'm Vice President of Strategy and Business Innovation at Quanta Technology. Uh, this time, I have the opportunity to speak with you about applications of synchronized measurement technologies in distribution systems. Uh, since 2012, the Quanta Technology team has been working on the development of utility-specific roadmaps for applications of synchronized measurement technologies in distribution systems. Our latest contribution in this area uh, consisted of developing an industry roadmap uh, the first task was the review and update of applications identified uh, in 2012 with uh, San Diego Gas and Electric. And the intention here was to address recent uh, industry and technology development. Uh, the next step, the second task, was interviews and discussions with uh, various utility business leaders and technical experts to validate and update these applications groups. The third task was a benefit cost analysis and prioritization of application groups. Relative costs, very important as well, were evaluated based on not only on CAPEX and OPEX, uh, but also on uh, complexity of the specific application group, risk, uh, maturity of the technology, and also organizational readiness to implement uh, each application group. Uh, the results uh, were then used to calculate a benefit-cost ratio to prioritize um, the, the application groups. Um, then in the next task, we uh, conducted interviews and discussions with um, the distribution task team of the North American Synchrophaser Initiative, uh, NASP, uh, to fine-tune those results. Uh, then we um, developed um, the industry roadmap including uh, recommended application groups uh, to, to be implemented in the short, mid, and long term, and also a, a high-level architecture and requirements for each application group. Uh, finally, we uh, identified uh, recommended pilot projects for implementation in the short term based on uh, roadmap findings. Um, we think uh, this roadmap can be used by any utility as a starting point for the development of a utility-specific roadmap.
Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. Our team has shown just some of the glimpses of the possible applications of the technology. And there are many more that we can do. For, for example, as we are seeing that system changes are happening much faster, technology like SCADA may not be fast enough or granular enough. Other sensors may also not be able to provide system-wide perspective and visibility. And then as we have PVs and storage and electrical vehicle charging behind the meter, we need to understand what's happening behind the meter to be able to operate the system better. So uh, as we are implementing those applications, we need to focus on what are some of the key success factors to properly deploy the system. And we start with the roadmaps. And roadmaps are not only application, but there are processes and infrastructure, because we need to do proper cost-benefit analysis to be able to prioritize investments in the right way. As we are developing the applications, we need to set up the requirements and architecture to be able to deploy in the right way. And then optimal technology selection to choose from various technologies that are now enab uh, enable us to, to depl deploy the, the synchronized measurements. And those technologies need to provide proper data quality. We need to have interoperability among those technologies to be able to, to uh, deploy the system the right way. Uh, in short, synchronized measurement, uh, a major technology, or I would even say basic technology, to be able to monitor, operate, and control the system and, and provide various applications for both planning and operations. As we are moving forward with the deployment, there are many more applications that we can uh, utilize and use in the, uh, in the future. And we are just seeing probably just the tip of the iceberg of potential applications with the technology. So we believe that this technology is a basic technology to help grid be more resilient, reliable, affordable, and safe. Thank you.